Okay, so hi everybody, um, and thank you for joining uh, me again on this this webinar. I've got someone very exciting that I'm going to talk today to. Um, we've got Mel Waite, who's a photographer, primarily a wedding photographer in, in New Zealand, and we're going to talk today about great customer service. Hi Mel, thanks for coming on board. Hi Benny, how are you? I'm fantastic, thank you. Um, customer service is something that we don't hear um, too much about nowadays in the photography industry. It's all about how you take the photos, it's all about marketing, it's all about selling. And I think, you know, where you come from is very interesting because you come from uh, giving great customer service and this in turn gives great reward to your business. Yes, absolutely. For me, um, it's 10% good photography and 90% customer service. Uh, at the end of the day, I want to give uh, my clients photographs that I am proud of and I'm happy with, but it's the experience for them that is just as important. Yeah, well that's great and uh, we'll come to that at the end and see what amazing uh, testimonials you get and, and this is uh, obviously you have a great referral business. Yes, definitely. It's a big part of my business. Uh, it also, I uh, get a lot of business through wedding shows because when people meet me and my team, uh, they get pumped, they get excited about their wedding um, and so that, that personal uh, interactivity is really, really important. Okay, so we've titled this webinar 10 Ways to Give Great Customer Service but before we go into that, let's just sort of look a little bit about you, um, this is you, right? Yep, that's me. <laughs> and, um, so you're a master with the NZIPP with a bar? Yep, that's right. Um, I've been an NZIPP member for about six years um, and have been entering the awards for uh, five or six years. So you haven't been entering the awards for very long and you've achieved great success. Yes, well, um, I'm hard on myself, so I always want to do better, but um, I'm pretty happy with, with where I'm going. Um, so it's, yeah, as I said, it's not just about customer service, um, it's about giving your clients a great product as well. And your current NZIPP Wellington chairperson. Yes, I am. That takes up a, a fair amount of time, uh, but for me, I think that with these organisations uh, like the NZIPP and the AIPP, it's really important to give into them as much as you expect to get back. Yeah, that's that's great. So this is your home studio. Yep, that's that's where I am, and that's where I'm now. And there's my uh, my studio boss, the monster. Yeah. The, now you've got that cat. What's the cat's name? His name is Monster. Oh, his name is Monster. I thought you were just calling the cat a monster. But um, uh, <laughs> Monster is featured on your website, so I thought we could just uh, show him on the webinar. Well, yes, um, a little bit about that and a little bit behind that. My sort of theory is on a wedding day, you are invited into something that is very personal and very private. You're often there when the bride's getting ready and the groom's getting ready and part in, in their homes. Um, you meet their family. They share part of you, part of themselves with you that is so personal. And so for me, it's a little bit about returning that. My studio is in my home. People come in through my front door. They meet my cat, um, who is my family. Um, they've generally met my husband as well. I want them to feel like I'm reciprocating that personal and private part so that they feel relaxed and comfortable with me. Yeah, great. And of course, many times when we go into a bride or groom's home, we, we do get to meet the pets and sometimes the pet is, is the baby of the couple getting married. Oh, absolutely. And I've had several couples who've booked me based on their pet's reaction to me. Okay. <laughs> really? <laughs> yep, absolutely. Particularly with dogs. I've had two couples um, 
one, uh, their dogs were part of their wedding and they ended up having a very small private wedding where it was the witnesses, the celebrant, myself and their two dogs. Wow. And when I came into their home, their two dogs just sort of came around me and, and wanted to sit on me and wanted cuddles and wanted attention and they said they knew that they could work with me then because they knew that their, their pets were relaxed around me. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, well, I can see why you use that. Uh, <laughs> you're a pet whisperer as well. <laughs> I don't know if I'd go that far, but uh, yeah, I um, I really understand and respect when um, someone's pet is as much a part of their family as, as any human members. Yeah. yeah, that's great. All right, so we, we've got um, these 10 ways we're going to look at. Whoops. Um, so... Let's talk about them one by one. Um, you do a, a same night slideshow at every wedding? Uh, pretty much every wedding, about 90%. Sometimes logistically um, I can't do it um, or sometimes the couple has specifically requested that they want to wait um, and they want their guests to wait um, until the web gallery goes up. Uh, but about 90% of my weddings I do. I offer a same day slideshow. What happens is um, I work with a second shooter, Deanna. You'll also see her on my website. Uh, she's amazing. She started working with me when she was 16. Um, she's now 20 um, and she's worked her way up from just assisting me for a couple of hours during the creatives to being there the whole day. When we get into the wedding, uh, the reception, uh, what happens is Deanna takes the cards that I've shot from the day and downloads um, what we've shot up to that point and selects, normally it's about 50 to 60 images uh, that have been taken throughout the day. They may not necessarily be the best images and then certainly when the couple sees them they're not the sort of the finished product but what she does is she chooses some that tell the story of the day specifically aimed um, knowing that a lot of that the guests have not seen. So it's about telling their wedding story to them and to the guests. Uh, what And what she does, very quick edit, normally a bit of a crop, sometimes she'll black and white something and just tidy them up, making sure they're looking nice and consistent. And generally, by the time dessert rolls, rolls around, they get dessert in a show. Um, so we will bring in a projector if we need to and a screen if we need to. Um, or we use what the um, venue has supplied yeah. um, to put that up for them. Uh, it's a great way of putting your customers at ease because they know that whatever happens, they've got you know at least sort of 50 or 60 images that they know are great, and that they know from that that the others will be of a similar standard. So it's a really nice way of of relaxing them. What I find is grandparents in particular love it because they come from a generation that had to wait weeks and weeks and weeks to see any photos. Uh, so it sort of gets them on board and it gets everyone excited. I did one on Saturday um, and one of, the, one of the images that we showed was a particularly awesome image, um, a little bit of luck with wind and a veil um, and it's pretty dramatic and that image I had sort of everyone started clapping and cheering because I was oh, so wow. excited. Yeah. That's that's so it. It gets, right. Did you take a bow? <laughs> I was, was pretty pretty embarrassed and pretty blown away. It, it's really neat when you get that sort of oh, response yeah. even before the slideshow is finished. So yeah. it really gets people pumped and excited. And uh, the th do you charge for this? Uh, it's included in my um, my any package that covers reception uh, covers the reception as well. So I have various levels of coverage. Um, again, about ninety percent of my clients choose to have me at the reception, so they get that included and it's built in. Yeah, well, that's great. That, that's that's fantastic. And as you say, you get such a great response, and that's the main thing. Yeah, it yeah. really is. Um, and the other thing, you know, we talked a, a little bit about its customer service, but it also leads to marketing for me because all those couples that are planning their wedding and are, are looking at getting married but are there on the day for their friend's wedding then sees a great selection and sample of my work 
um, which can lead to them wanting to come up and meet me and book me. I tend to end up handing out at least sort of four or five business cards to people after they've seen the slideshow. It's, it works really well on that level as well. Yeah, oh, it sounds great. Um, okay, so that's uh, number one. Number two, you do a location scout. Now, not many photographers would do this. They'd feel it takes up a lot of time. Um, just tell us about how you go about this. Okay, so what happens is generally about a month before the wedding, uh, I arrange to meet the couple, normally either on an evening um, or on a Sunday. Uh, when it suits the venue as well. Uh, we meet up, it's, it's a location scout and it's a planning session. It's a chance for me to go over all the timings um, and all the things that the bride and groom want to make sure that they're at ease, um, to wander around the location with them so we sort of we plan out uh, great spots for photos, where they're having the ceremony, where would be a good spot for the family photos, and we just sort of go over everything. It's just a way of putting them at ease, um, and it's also a chance for me to, to check everything. Most of the venues I go to I've shot at before and I know them really well, but I aim to do something different for each couple and not use the same spot. So it's a, a chance for me to remind myself of this venue and try and find some new spots, some spaces I may not have shot in before. Um, yeah, so it, it works on, on many levels. And what about the rehearsal? Do you go to that? Where possible, I go to the rehearsal. Um, it's not guaranteed because sometimes, particularly if, if a, um, a wedding venue is, is a couple of hours drive from where I live, um, I won't necessarily go to the rehearsal, but if I can, I'll make it. Uh, a big part of that is it gives me a chance to meet everyone. Uh, it gives me a chance to, to meet the, the bride and groom's family who are often there and the bridal party so on the day they know me it, mean, it means that I, I sort of slide into the wedding day a little bit more relaxed and people are a little bit more comfortable around me. Uh, it means that I can make sure that during the day, during the ceremony, the bride and groom and the bridal party know what they're doing. I work with the celebrant quite closely um, to do this and so that they know to keep their heads up when they walk down the aisle and to space it so that they don't all end up on the aisle at the same time and I can't get photos of the bride walking down, just all that stuff. So in the end it means that I get better photos and everyone's uh, far more at ease on the day. Yeah, that's great. And again, do you charge for this? Uh, again, it's built into my, my full coverage package, so if you book to have me for a whole day, that's included. Uh, it's an add-on for the smaller packages if uh, a couple would like me to be there. Okay, and um, you recommend various vendors for to help the bride and groom out. Do you, you, do you feel this is important as part of your service? Absolutely, absolutely. So I work with a lot of vendors um, here in Wellington and across uh, New Zealand as a whole and what I find is if I've got vendors that I know I work really well with uh, and I recommend them, then the day runs far smoother for the bride and groom uh, and far smoother for me because we know how um, each other works and yeah, it, it's a great way. Um, it also is reciprocal if I recommend um, a vendor to a bride and groom and they know this, then they will recommend me in return um, and what I always say to vendors who recommend me is recommend me because you like working with me, not because you feel obliged because I've recommended you. Yeah. Um, I want to have good, uh, good relationships with those vendors. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, also, particularly with hair and makeup, um, I'm going to recommend good hair and makeup artists I know who will do a good job and make sure that makeup and hair stays all day yep. uh, so that I can get good photos. So you're like an extra bridesmaid, as, as we've got here, on the wedding day. Is that right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. So I am the photographer that if the bride's hair is falling out, I will get the hairspray and the, the hairpins out of my, my kit and make sure she looks great. If no one's holding her dress up and it's dragging in the mud, I will make sure it gets picked up either by myself or Deanna. Uh, she's got lipstick on her teeth, I'll tell her, uh, all those sorts of things. I mean, uh, 
classic sort of uh, way things go here in Wellington. Wellington is very, very windy. Uh, so generally, um, it'll be, um, I'll go to the bride. So where are you planning on getting, getting married? Oh, we're getting married on a cliff top that overlooks the sea in this beautiful windswept field. Oh, that's great. That'll be lovely. And so what are you planning on doing with your hair? Yeah. Well, I want long ringlets that, that mm. flow down my back. And, and I'm sitting here thinking, hmm, mm. in about two seconds that hair is going to be whipped out and stringy and all over her face. So I offer my advice. I say, well, maybe it's, it's best if it's going to be a windy day and you're going to be in an exposed place. We look at, you look at talking to your hairdresser about having options to put it up, um, which is the sort of advice you would, you would expect from a bridesmaid. Um, and I hope that they back me up with that. And um, if she insists on having her hair out, I do know that at some point it will get to the point where she'll want to have it pinned back and so I make sure I chuck in extra hairpins, extra hairspray so that if that case comes I'm able to do that for her. Yeah, we'll talk about what kit you carry a little bit later but, but um, yeah. that's great and obviously this gives the bride a lot of confidence that she's got someone there that's been there and, and done that many times and um, uh, that must take a lot of the pressure off her on, on, on her wedding day. It really does. And with the groomsmen, I mean, so so few groomsmen these days wear ties, know how to wear a suit properly, know what it should look like. Um, and, and buttonholes are a big one. Very few people know how to put on a buttonhole correctly. Um, and so, you know, the bridesmaid type duties I guess or groomsmen type duties is to make sure that happens and so I help and assist with that. I've been known to tie tie, um, you know a lot of people particularly um, on your wedding day you want to look good, you want to have a full Windsor rather than just a half Windsor tie, I know how to do that, I can teach a groomsman how to do that so that he can he can then continue on and help the others. Um, yeah and, and if that the pin sticking out of the, the buttonhole at a wrong angle, I'll take it and I'll help and make sure that everything looks great. That's great. And um, yeah, guys need a bit of help too because they can be a bit slow, <laughs> can't they, in the way they dress on the wedding <laughs> day. Not quite sure they what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, they certainly do. And uh, yeah, and everyone appreciates that. Okay, so, you know, I can see the value in having you at a wedding already. I mean, I want you at my wedding. Um, but there's some <laughs> other things. <laughs> there's, there's some other things um, that I found interesting that you do. And one is this portable hard drive. Tell us about that. <laughs> okay, so um, a few people have teased me about this. I'm, I'm a little bit paranoid about backups. Um, I've had some horror stories from fellow photographers, um, one in particular where they had a wedding um, and the next morning before they had had a chance to download and back up, they were broken into <coughs> and everything was stolen and they lost an entire wedding, wow. um, completely lost it and that just terrifies me because I would hate to be the bride and groom being told by the photographer that they have no photos of their wedding day. Uh, so. First thing I do is, regardless of what time I get home from a wedding, I, bat, I download all my cards that night. I download onto a um, mirror drive, so it's a, it's a hard drive that's external to my computer and it has two hard drives, so you've always got two copies sitting side by side. Um, I then take all those and put them onto uh, just a little portable drive that then goes in my purse and gets carried everywhere with me. It's the concept of what's called a three-legged stool of backup. I have three copies of everything at all time and one of them is on me. My purse even sits next to the bed at night so if I need to get out of the house in a hurry because of an earthquake or a fire or something, um, it goes with me. And yeah, so I know I've always got copies. Talking of earthquakes, you do have a few there, don't you? Yes, we do. Um, we do. <laughs> and they're, they're serious. For anyone else uh, listening to this around the world, um, Wellington had a couple of major ones uh, within the last few years. Was that right? 
Yeah, we, we regularly get sort of um, four and five um, on the Richter scale earthquakes and we consider those fairly little here. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, so we get a few shakes. Christchurch, uh, which isn't too far away from us, um, had some very major earthquakes um, and there were a lot of photographers who um, had to get out of their buildings um, because of the earthquakes and were not able to ever go back in. Um, and so that's why I have a portable hard drive. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. going that's going beyond customer service, isn't it? That's fantastic. Yeah, and well, as I said, I just put my my self in my bride and groom's shoes and how would I feel if I lost those photos? Yeah. And with the weddings, uh, you say no time limit. And I love this photograph, by the way. It's a beautiful setting. And just having the bride and groom sitting there, I assume that, um, you know, this is at the end of the wedding when all the, the all the guests have left and there's just you and the bride and groom. I'm only joking, Mel. Um, <laughs> this is a oh, no. photo. Yeah, thank you. This photo was actually taken... Um we arrived back to the venue to do a few photos before the guests were allowed in, so they had set it all up ready to go for the reception, but they hadn't let the guests in. So we snuck in for about five minutes and just grabbed a couple of shots um, of their beautiful setup before um, all the guests came in, because so rarely do you have that opportunity with the bride and groom there. Mm, especially in such a beautiful setting. Oh yeah, it is. It's a fantastic location here in Wellington and it's right in the heart of the city, right on the waterfront. Uh, so it's a pretty cool place. Um, yeah, so um, in terms of no time limit, well, I guess it's kind of, in terms of no time limit, what I do is I sit down with a bride and groom and if they've booked me for my Just Shoot Us Plus package, which is a full day's coverage, I like to plan it out. I try to work with them so that it's no, it's around 10 hours um, that I'm there with them. If it's looking closer to 12, I tend to try and adjust it um, because I don't like to shoot more than 12 hours in a day um, for my own sanity and you really don't want to see my photos after 12 hours behind the camera. But in saying that, if the day's running late and we need to postpone for whatever reason, I'm not going to be worried. If it ends up that I'm shooting closer to sort of uh, 12 and a half or 13 hours, I'm not going to say, right, I'm sorry, day's running late, I'm going to pack up and leave now because that's all you've paid me for. That's why I work on coverage and not hours. Yeah, so many photographers, I think, make a mistake by charging, you know, uh, 200, 250. Uh, I heard of one photographer charging an extra $350 an hour um, to stay a little bit into the reception and I, I don't think that's really a good thing to do. Well no, it adds stress to the bride and groom. What I want is I also have a rule with bride and grooms is that I don't like them to wear a watch on their wedding day because I don't want them to worry about time. And if they're constantly having to check their watch and go, oh hang on a minute, we're running late, we're going to lose now in this time and we want to get this, this and this done, it creates stress and it shows in their faces and it shows in the photos and um, at the end of the day I want to make that bride and groom as happy as I possibly can with their photos which means they need to be as relaxed as I can possibly make them. Yeah, so that's great. So when you say no time limit, you sort of really mean no time limit because if you're talking 12 hours, that's, that's a big day. It is. It is a big day. Most of my weddings are around 10 hours, but um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy to sort of extend it if I need to. I don't have anything else scheduled on that day. Um, I'm there for them um, for whatever they need. Yeah. So your web gallery. Tell us about your web gallery. Okay. So um, every couple that, um, that books me gets an online gallery. Um, it, is private and locked for them uh, to share with their friends and family. What I find is it takes me a little while to process the photos, um, especially around this time of year when I've got sort of seven weddings in in four weeks. Um, I, you know, it keeps me on my toes, and I don't want them to feel like they've been waiting forever for their photos. Mm -hmm. So what I do is is normally within a week. Uh, two weeks maximum after the wedding, I put together a gallery that's got around 80 or so shots from the day that tell their story a little bit more extended 
than the um, the, the slideshow um, and the images are finished and ready to go so they know what they'll look like when they get them um, and pop them pop that up it means that mum and dad aren't going oh when are we going to see the photos it means that the bride has something to show around her office when she returns from her honeymoon um, you know just all those things yeah and I keeps them happy with me yeah I know just at the top I've got seven ways to get great customer service when I first started this uh, we had seven ways but it just kept going on you just keep offering all this great service so it actually extended to ten and I've still got the yeah. seven ways so uh, just amazing what sort of customer service you give Mel the the wedding rehearsal we talked about that tell us a bit more when you do them do you find it beneficial yeah, I find it very beneficial. What I find is the weddings that I have not been able to get to the rehearsal, the ceremony doesn't flow as well visually um, and I end up missing out on shots just because logistically I can't get them or as I said, the biggest one I find is that the the bride comes in down the aisle straight after her bridesmaids and doesn't allow time um, for them to get down and so I miss a whole lot of shots of her walking down the aisle and that should be her and her dad's moment um, you know to, to build that anticipation for her groom to get a good look at her um, and if the, she's coming in five steps behind her maid of honour no one can see her so you know it's something I tell them on the day I also inject a little bit of humour into the rehearsal uh, because it can be quite a stressful time and you know they're wanting everything to run smoothly the the venue vendor the, you know the venue is saying look we've got to get this going because we've got another wedding coming in or we've got something else going on tonight um, the bride wants to get you know get this done so she can then relax um, that night for the next day or she's got to get to you know her spray tan or get her nails done so I inject a little bit of humor to make it a bit fun and a bit more enjoyable one of the things I do is give them my rules for kissing <laughs> and of course it gets everyone else laughing and enjoying um, enjoying that moment and having a bit of fun um, at the bride and groom's sort of expense and it, it's yeah it's good yeah it sounds great it sounds like the wedding rehearsal would be Great fun. Now, you carry a lot of things on the wedding. Uh, I've got a few there. Tell us about all this. Is there anything else you can? <laughs> yes. So my car is loaded with stuff. Um, everything that I have is stuff that I've we've needed and not had in the past. So I chuck it in there just in case. Right. Um, so lollies and chocolate, what I find is um, it's a big long day for the bride and groom. Normally before the ceremony, the, groom, the bride is too nervous to eat and so blood sugar gets a bit low and she gets a bit flat by the time we roll around the, to the creative photos. Uh, so um, quite often they'll have a picnic or something organised but I always make sure there's a little bit of a picnic up in there, some sweets, some chocolate um, so that they can get a bit of a sugar burst and it helps them um, sort of get on with the day. Um, again, brides and grooms and bridal parties tend not to drink a lot of water on the day so they can get a little bit dehydrated which means that they often get headaches and things like that so painkillers come in handy. I have also have needle and thread, safety pins, as I mentioned before, hairspray and hair clips, um, lip gloss, just all that stuff that that is generally needed but often forgotten so they don't need to worry. Um, the umbrellas are self-explanatory. Um, they also come in handy on hot days um, to provide the bridal party with a bit of shade so they're not standing in the sun getting burnt because um, down here in New Zealand the uh, burn times can get as low as five minutes um, on a good day mm -hmm. and um, we don't want bright red um, brides and bridesmaids that we then have to Photoshop later. Um, and the, the flip-flops, um, or as we call them in New Zealand, jandals. Um, brides and bridesmaids are often wearing stilettos um, and hard shoes to manoeuvre in. Uh, here where we are, we do a lot of beach weddings, a lot of farm weddings, a lot of vineyard weddings. So we're asking the brides and bridesmaids to negotiate really uneven ground. Um, and so I always ask for them to pack them. But if they forget, I've got a pair of comfy shoes that they can slip on and get around and without ruining their satin stilettos. 
Yeah, that's great. And especially the lollies and chocolate. I know from the weddings um, that I used to do, you know, the, the bride and bridesmaid would be drinking champagne before the wedding and and the guys would be having a drink or whatever. And then, you know, two or three hours later, when you do the location shoot, the energy level starts to drop. And that's when you yeah. re get that get those lollies and that sugar into them to get them pumped and excited again. Absolutely, and as you know, Bernie, a large percentage of our day is based around um, organising people who are uh, tipsy. So um, having something that we can bribe them with and get their attention with really helps. Yeah, it makes it makes the job a little bit easier if we've got that energy level up. Because as you say, a long day, many hours, and uh, it's important for them that um, you know the photographs reflect a, a great day throughout the day. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the weather check, tell me about this. Uh, you check the weather the day before or do you notify the bride what, what the weather's going to be or you just like the weather? Oh, I had my bride on Saturday tell me laughing that um, I had more information than the Met Service um, <laughs> yeah, on great. what the weather was well, what I've discovered over um, many years shooting um, is that I can generally tell um, by what the Met, Met Service says is what um, and what's going to happen. It, it's not necessarily the same thing, but I know the weather patterns around Wellington and the Wire Wrapper pretty well, um, and I know um, what's going to come. So what I'll do is, is um, we normally have an idea about 10 days before a wedding what it might be, um, and then it sort of starts to firm up about five days before. Um, so I check the weather, I let the bride know if, um, and the groom know if there's um, any chance of bad weather um, so that they're prepared um, because as much as we can tell them you can't control it so don't stress, they're never going to listen to you. Um, and then um, if it is looking like it's going to be a rainy day or a very windy day, um, I let them know that we've got backup options and I organise alternate locations um, for photos, um, yeah, so it, it's just a, a little bit of touching base um, with the couple so that they know that you're onto it and that you're going to do your best to make sure that they get great photos regardless. Yeah, that's great and uh, it must, must really put their mind at ease because I know with a lot of brides that they do panic about the weather, they want the weather perfect as they call it. Um, so to have someone saying to them, don't worry, we've got a backup plan, let's do this, let's do that, um, would really make them feel a lot more comfortable. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, these are a couple of photographs of you in action. Obviously you <laughs> walk around whenever you have to and, and you don't mind those uh, family and friends taking those iPhone photos and is that okay? No, a not at all. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I call them my Pavarazzi. Um, <laughs> That's what they look like in a photograph. That's great. Absolutely. So what I find is some more and more now, um, brides and grooms are asking to have unplugged weddings and asking people not to take photos, which is great. But I would never ever dream of um, telling uh, the guests not to take photos. When we go, of course, when we go away on the creative shoot with the bride, uh, groom and bridal party, I, I request that, that no one comes with us for that, mainly because it means that the bride and groom can relax and not sort of be distracted. Uh, during the family photos though, you know, it's really important that those families get those photos because it's often you know, once every 10 years that they all get together and that they're all looking their best and want to have their photos taken. What I tend to do with those ones is I say, right, everyone look at the paparazzi and I make sure they get their shots and then I get them to put their photos down, uh, their cameras down and focus on me so I know I've got everyone's eyes um, at my camera. Um, during the ceremony though, if someone's in my way, I will politely ask them to move. Um, but otherwise I let them take their photos. Um, yeah, and with regards to uh, to getting down on the ground and moving, I have a very mean personal trainer uh, who I see twice a week to make sure I'm fit and healthy and I can move uh, because sometimes the best shot 
that you can get and the best angle is lying on the ground or climbing up on a roof and I want to be able to do that for my bride and groom Yeah, I think and to be able to do it well into my 60s. Yeah, I think if I was lying down like that, I may need a bit of help with all that uh, camera gear uh, on me as well. Um, that's, a, <laughs> that's a great attitude, Mel, with, with family and friends uh, taking photographs. I know from my experience of doing, you know, thousands of weddings that, they're always there. They always have been there. They should have the right to take photographs. And I handled it exactly like you uh, said then, you know, give them their moment to take the photographs. It is important. They may have traveled from the other side of the world um, to, to attend the wedding and they've brought the camera. They want some photographs as well. And if they're in the way, just politely tell them, you know, to, to just move to one side. And I love your attitude with that, Mel. I, I think more photographers should take that attitude. Absolutely. It's the old adage that um, you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. It really doesn't, you know, cost you anything to smile and be polite and make those guests feel as welcome and as warm as you would to the bride and groom. And then they smile back when you're taking their photo. They don't mind if you're taking their photo because you've been warm and friendly to them at another situation in the day. Yeah, that's that's great. I love, I love that. So with all this great customer service, it gives you these amazing testimonials. Um, this is one uh, from a DJ in Tasmania who attended a wedding that you were photographing and he says that, you know, out of 424 weddings he's done, you were the best photographer um, in the way you approached the wedding that he'd come across. Yeah, it's pretty neat when um, completely um, unasked that I get things like this popping up on my Facebook um, business page. You know, he, he was a, a lovely guy, he was a guest at the wedding and he came up to me on the day and he said he just loves how happy and smiley and accommodating I am, that nothing that I was asked by the guests or the bride and groom was, was too much, it, the answer was always yes. Um, yeah, so it was, it was really neat to hear that. That's very sort of powerful testimonial, I, I love that. And another one here, from a guest. So this guest actually yes. just sent you an email out of the blue. Absolutely. Out of the blue, had no idea that they, you know, sort of I barely spoke to them on the day, um, but it was. It was really neat. What I liked, it, 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 she says, or he says, so impressed with not just your photography skills, but the ease you put people at, your willingness to take all the shots guests wanted, and the speed at which you produced that awesome video preview at the wedding itself. And um, that, you know, if that's just one guest at that wedding, I would suggest most of the guests would feel similar. They're really impressed with the way you work and, and that video slideshow at the end of the night just obviously blew yeah. away. Well, that's it. I mean, the, the thing we often forget as photographers is we get so focused on the bride and groom and bridal party that we forget that the guests are as important to the bride and groom, that these are special people to them. But also, these people are your potential clients of the future. So it's really important to, do, to present a good face and a kind face and a willing face to these people because you don't know what when they're going to need a photographer next and if you've done that they will think of you and they'll want to book you. Yeah that's fantastic and the other amazing thing is this one you got from a groom who was blown away personally with every, and every single person at our wedding um, you know and, and from the moment that he and, and Tess his, his fiance met you you made the journey much easier. Yes, well, you know, generally we find that brides are pretty comfortable with having their photo taken, not all of them, but a lot of them, and, and you have so much to do with the bride and generally less with the groom. Um, and I find that grooms are a little bit more nervous, a little bit more unsure about having their photo taken, and so it's really important really important to me that I spend just as much time focusing on the groom and I make sure I get groom, groomsmen photos and I make sure that they have fun and I can talk to them on their level as much as the bride. And 
you know, the the bottom part, he says, we all love you and we have all said we'd love to actually just hang out with you. They, they just want to, you know, they want to hang out with you. That, that's yeah, well. Absolutely. Well, that's what I always say. I want people to enjoy their time with me and not feel like the photos are just something they have to do. Um, so, yeah, so it's it's really neat when they say that, that they've actually enjoyed their time with me. And then he even made that offer. If you need any concrete thing done, I'll happily do it as a thank you. So he's saying <laughs> if you want some <laughs> concreting done, no, no charge, just to say thank you. In other words, we can't thank you enough. Yeah, which is fantastic because, I mean, the, the reality is, is, as you know, Bernie, I'm, I'm certainly not a, a, a cheap photographer. I'm, I, am, I offer a premium service, uh, but I feel like there's a reason for that and, and the justification for that is all the, the time and energy and all the extras I put in is part of that. Um, so, and it, it's well worth it. And if I've got brides and grooms that are, are happily paid my fees, and then feel like they need to give me more, then, you know, that's awesome. Yeah, that, that's great. And I, uh, as I said, I think um, customer service is something that gets a little bit lost, especially uh, with photographers. And But we all know when we get great customer service, we remember and we talk to others about it, about the service and how great it was. So... To see a photographer doing it is really great, um, not only for you, but for the industry, I think. Absolutely. There's nothing that makes me sadder than when I hear from a couple who didn't use me as a photographer and said, oh, you know, we were just really disappointed. He was, you know, he or she was grumpy or rude or, you know, left early or things like that. It just makes me really, really sad because, you know, you can't do it over. You only, you only do that wedding once. It's not like a portrait shoot that you can reshoot um, if you're not happy. And so we've got to get it right. And it's not just the photography that's important. You're spending all day with people on what is a really, really important part of their life and probably up until then, their most important day. And if you are the, the, the sore thumb of the day, that you know, the... the um, the bit that was a letdown, then that's that's a really sad thing and it's not a place I would want to be. Yes, the, the thing is nowadays you see a lot of photographers and they tend to um, make it a, it's like a competition, us versus the bride and groom. What you do is become not only down to their level but you become their servant because they're employing you to do a job and that job you do, you know, with customer service that just blows them away. Well, that's it. It's, um, I always say to people, if you don't love weddings and you don't want to be there and to give those that couple the best day of their lives, then don't photograph weddings because it shows if you don't love it. It really does, and um, and that's it. You know that they are my employees for that day, and you know there are some things that I've been asked to do that I'm I'm not overly keen on. But generally, if I sit down and I talk with them and I negotiate, we come up with a situation that we're both happy with, and that they walk away feeling like I've taken their requests and their consideration, you know, in into uh, into consideration. Yeah. Yeah, and that's fantastic, Mel. So thanks for your time so much. This has really been enlightening, and I'm sure the people listening and, and just looking at those uh, slides would surely get so much out of it. And whether they're, you know, a full-time professional that's been doing weddings for many years or whether they're starting off, there's so many lessons to be learned here. So thanks for your time, Mel. It's just fantastic. Oh, you're welcome. It's been my pleasure. It's been lovely to talk uh, with you, Bernie. And uh, if anyone has questions, yeah, don't don't hesitate to contact me. And I know, Mel, that you're very busy. You, you've got a lot of weddings this month or within a few weeks. Um, tell us about that quickly. Uh, I know that you're pretty exhausted, um, but <laughs> keep coming back and and keep shooting those weddings. You had three in a row, was it, the other week? Friday? Yep, yep. I, 
Yep. I've, I've done a few three in a row. Um, this month just gone, um, there was only one weekend where I had one wedding. Every other weekend was at least two weddings. Um, but I always make sure that I can give 100% to that bride and groom when I'm on their wedding um, and, um, and can focus um, on their day, which is, yeah, is really important. Yeah, fantastic, Mel. Um, good to chat to you and um, thanks for your time. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, Bernie. All right. Cheers. Thanks, Mel. Cheers.